Thank you all for being here. I actually think it's harder for you to pry yourself away from day-to-day -day activities to get here at a late notice than it is for me to drive from Milwaukee because it's part of what I'm supposed to be doing. So um, uh, we have a great uh, spectrum of faculty and staff and administrators here around the room, and I think that's excellent. And I'm, we're really uh, happy to be able to talk with you today about this concept of universal design. Um, I want to right up front mention that I think one of the most difficult things about universal design is represented of the people who aren't here. One of the hardest parts of doing universal design on any campus is the instructor. And it's really hard to get instructors because they're teaching in uh, sessions and in communication with how might they embed some of the universal design concepts uh, into their day-to-day -day contact with students. And so one of the things that you'll see is sort of a theme is how do you take information about universal design and how do we infuse it across the campus? And so that's a challenge I'll toss out to you, but hopefully we'll have some ideas along that line as well. Um, just to sort of introduce myself a little bit more, and then Ora and Tim, when they talk, can mention a little bit more of their background. But uh, I'm, I'm uh, a little bit of a unique bird that I bring um, several different perspectives to what I do. And I think you'll see some of those things sneaking out um, I have a background in the social sciences, the health sciences, and a degree in engineering. So with three different degrees from different perspectives, um, I hope that I can sort of pull some things together. I think universal design is technical, it's people-oriented, and it's administrative. There's a whole variety of, of important aspects of how we uh, go about uh, implementing universal design. Anyway, we're starting out with sort of a quick overview. Some of you have seen some pieces of this or heard some pieces of this. So uh, we'll try not to, to, to you know, uh, uh, reside on any point uh, too long, but we do want to sort of march through this for anybody who might not have seen this before or some of the concepts. Our first slide actually highlights something that's relatively important about PowerPoint slides. And you notice at the bottom there are two buttons. One says begin presentation and one says go to the accessibility instructions. One of the things we can do is we can make our PowerPoint presentations more accessible. And one way to do that is to provide the text descriptions of any of the graphical elements in the PowerPoint. And the idea there is if someone's blind in the room, and it could be that it's a blind student, or it could be somebody you know, sitting behind the pillar, or it could be somebody sitting way in the back of the room, or interestingly enough, it could be the really good student who's taking notes madly and is watching and doing their notes and glancing up at the slides, and therefore they may not catch everything that's on the slide at any given moment. And so if we can provide some information of how we describe the slides, but also provide some of the background behind the slides as text descriptions of the graphics, it really helps everybody out in the long run. So it's universal design. Um, we won't go into the detail of how we create these. That We do have sort of a protocol that would be available to you to, uh, to to go into that more detail. But here, just simply seeing that we can begin the presentation or we can go to look at how to get into the accessibility instructions. Basically, the speaker notes, most of you are acquainted with how PowerPoint's set up. There's a speaker notes section for each slide. And that's where the descriptions of the slide goes, not just for the person presenting, but also for the potential student or participant that needs a little bit more information about those slides. Presented by myself, uh, Tim, and, and Aura, uh, the, our brief uh, caption here has to do with the Access Ed Project uh, and its uh, support. We want to recognize the U.S. Department of Education. And interestingly enough, this particular funding um, is like much of national funding, and that is the part of the administration might sort of slash the budget, and then another part of our uh, Congress, another part of our legislation tries to put the money back in. And so uh, it's that cyclical thing. And every year, we really never know how much money is going to be available, but we've been uh, doing well with this particular cycle. Um, and thank you for the invitation to come to your campus. Uh, June uh, and uh, uh, her office certainly coordinated uh, this for us. UW-La Crosse is actually one of the third or fourth campuses to become a partner with the Access Ed Project. And we really heartily welcome you to that. UW-Platteville, UW-Madison, UW-Parkside, and the colleges have been a little uh, involved a little bit longer. So we really are happy to get La Crosse uh, up and running and, and connected a little bit more to what we're doing.